bleeding the brakes on a 1955 Buick with standard brakes, no power. Go on YouTube and you can find a thousand ways to bleed brakes. This is the simplest hydraulic brake system there is out there just about. First thing you do need to do after you purchase your 1955 Buick and you're all excited about it you need to buy a service manual they're out there they're not rare There's a lot of them out there yet I actually wish I would have bought two because this one was very pristine but I've been using it in the shop and it's got some fingerprints it's getting a little rough around the edges I kinda wish I would have bought a second one but anyway Really everything you need to know about bleeding a 55 Buick brakes is right here in this book. The only difference that I would do different, and I don't know if it makes a lot of difference, is that they tell you to start at the closest wheel cylinder bleeding instead of the one farthest away. Like I have always been taught. You know, I've always been taught to do the farthest one away and work toward the closest one. So it would be right rear, left rear, right front, left front. But they tell you to do the opposite. And here they show a bottle. And it gives you exact directions how to do it. So you can do this without your wife coming out to the garage and going through all that drama. So one other thing that I do is I use a vacuum brake bleeder and it's not a power bleeder it's just a vacuum pump and I'll show you how that works well if you guys don't already realize it if you just bought the 55 Buick your master cylinder is under the floor it's under the carpet hey there it is so you want to bench bleed the master cylinder first, fill it to the top, install it, and then what I did, I went to the right rear. So let's go back there. Okay, here's my little vacuum pump. It comes with a little reservoir there, basically made for bleeding brakes. So let's take a look around back. And I got the wrench on the bleeder screw. I got my hose and I got my vacuum pump here. Now actually before I even start pumping this what I did I open the bleeder I go back and I slowly pump that pedal just like it says in the book and what will happen is you're going to get most of the air out and it's going to fill this little plastic container here. Then after I check the brake fluid make sure I'm not too low in the master I will start pumping this vacuum it'll start sucking the brake fluid out of that hose and while it's pulling that brake fluid out I tighten with that wrench and I would say you're pretty much done at that point um, you want to go to your left rear right front left front and then just to make sure, I do it one more time. But you probably don't have to have the wife come out and help you do this. However, there is one more way that you can do a final bleed. And I'll show you that one. Okay, here is another method you can use for the final bleed if you're still want to be 100% sure you have every bubble out. What I've done is I've jammed a piece of wood up against the seat so it's pushing very hard. You want to use the seat compression springs or whatever um, to put pressure on that brake pedal. And then you can go back there and crack that line just a little bit and watch it. Make sure there's no air coming out. Of course, when the flow stops, you got to lock it down because obviously there's no longer any pressure on you don't want any air pulled back in 
actually this works fantastic on a car with a power seat. Uh, I did my Park Avenue this way. I put the block of wood in, run the power seat up, um, went out and bled it, and then you know reset it, and then bled it again, and it worked great. Okay, I've got the block of wood jammed under the seat. I'm going to loosen this bleeder a little bit. You can see the brake fluid come out. And it's nice and clean. No bubbles. And just move on to the next one.